Good morning, and welcome to our first episode of Hopeful News. I am David Gonzalez, everyone's favorite nurse and the lead anchor of Hopeful News. My co-anchor is Sherry Gears. <laughs> is, is that okay? No? Lead anchor and favorite nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just some people's kids. I think I've got the emails to prove it, no? I, well, we can be co-anchors. Yeah. My name is Sherry okay. Dears. I also am a nurse at Hope Bio. I used to be on the foundation side with David, but now I'm on the manufacturing side. And we miss you. And together, we see tons of patients. So with everything going on in the world today, which most of the times is not a positive thing, we decided to create Hopeful News. What because why not? Way? Yeah, why not? Why not bring a little hope into this world? What did they say? Because we can, and we will. So besides the PDO4 study that we're um, enrolling for, we just got through with what we call PDO3, that clinical trial that had 24 patients that banked their cells and got treatment with their own cells. And I think the last visit was in February. How's that going? Yeah, it's going really well. So that was a really exciting study. Um, as you said, yeah, we saw yeah. some really great things. That was our first group study, correct? For Parkinson's. For Parkinson's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. PDO1 and 2 were individual patient right. studies. And then PDO3 was our first big group. Yeah. yeah. So that one, that one went really well. We saw, you know, really interesting that you and I kind of, you know, kind of figured along the way. At a certain point, you kind of start seeing, you know, some patients, they're having, uh, you know, some positive you know, differences, you know, they're able to do things they hadn't been able to do in years. Yep. And then you have the others that are like, you know, kind of at the same place. And so we, you, we guessed yeah. or tried to guess on everybody as right. they went on. By the time they got to treatment four or five, we pretty much had locked in who we thought were getting sales and what. Yeah. And I think once we, it was unblinded, everything was complete. I think we were off by what, one patient maybe? Were we? I think. I was off by one. I think you got all of them. I was going to say we. <laughs> <laughs> the PDO4 is our group Parkinson's study with a, uh, an approved donor cell. And so that's really exciting because there's no cost for banking. Uh, there's no cost to the patient whatsoever for anything study related. How many total patients could enroll? 60 participants 60. for PDO4, yeah. And we have about 20 um, spots left. Uh, we're starting it's gonna to fill up. Yeah, yep, yeah. It's going to fill up. Really quickly, getting a lot of inquiries from patients, uh, phone calls, emails. You know, a lot of them will comment they've seen the YouTube videos or they've seen our social media. Um, so I think that's definitely starting to reach a lot more people Me for too. sure. It is so very hard to believe that all of these clinical trials and all of this study, all of them started back with one single patient. That's right. Yeah. That we started in 2019. And that video is now posted on YouTube, by the way. I saw it. Yeah. The one that came from the Health Innovation Summit. Yes. That was it. I could not believe it. Do you know how many times I've searched and searched for that? It was a chore to do it. I'm so happy it's posted now as a video because it is absolutely remarkable. I remember the day that we went for the Innovation Summit. You know, NG had had seven treatments, I think, seven bi-weekly treatments. And when she walked up on the stage, we saw the condition she was before. And then she gets up and just walks up on the right. stage and takes the microphone yeah. to talk. And the whole place was in awe. When we left, after she talked and, and did the model walk coming back, she looked so fabulous. We, um, I thought we were never going to get out of there to have lunch. Everybody in the building wanted to talk to her. They were yeah. all just coming up and wanted to take a picture with her and talk. And she was in there. She had always done um, miniatures and dioramas and whatnot. And she had always wow. made those. And she couldn't make them. The next thing you know, she made one for us. You, If you look up close, there are so many details. For the record, this right here is what, can you see the wiggly yeah. stuff? She called, those are representative of stem cells because <laughs> she calls the stem cells her wigglies. Am I getting my wigglies? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You are. You are, yeah. So she tried to do like a recreation um, of hope and the stuff that's there. 
uh, she and her husband came and she got pictures and printed off pictures and tried to make like the floors and whatnot. And anyhow, the more you look, the more detail it is. She did that that first Christmas. So if you're not familiar with some of the symptoms of Parkinson's, uh, some patients can have tremors oh, yeah. so badly that they can't even hold their hand still or their fingers still. It, eating becomes an issue. Eating because food all comes off of the The daily the things floor. we take for granted become an issue. You yeah. know, and that's that's one of the worst things about it. But yeah. so just to look at this and the detail that she put into it and, and the how time it must have taken. Yeah. Are. I don't yeah. even think I could do this. One of the things that sometimes we forget that goes with some of these diseases and when they finally do get to feel better and more like themselves is the psychological part that goes with it. I mean, she this is one of her favorite things to do, mm -hmm. but she wasn't able to do it for how many years? Yeah, for And a so, while. yeah, just the fact that she's able to do it, but also the mm -hmm. peace that it brings her, the peace of mind, the the yeah, it's just can't even imagine. So, you know, NG had in the course of her treatment periodic uh, PET scans, FDG PET scans that looked at glucose uptake and changes in her brain. And um, we collected that over the thing because initially she was treated under uh, a compassionate use case. And so a doctor from UT, Dr. Alan Prosson, he read all of those images, <laughs> did all the comparisons to, to show not only did we have the, the gait and the stability and the no stiffness or rigidity. Right. Not only did we see physical changes in her, there were changes that imaging reflected in her brain. And they put together a case report and that was published recently. Yeah, uh, exciting. Uh -huh, our case study for our PDO1. And how many now? We have a total of five publications now that we Wow. Five publications. Isn't that in exciting? 2023. In 2023. That's a lot. What's the goal for 2024? I think 10. We're going to do <laughs> a lot of studies. Yeah. 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 Well, um, those uh, case studies and the information from that all gets gathered and put together. Somebody has to read all that. So, how about if we hand out to our field correspondent? Nadir Lati to meet with Redima, our PhD scientist extraordinaire. I think that's a great idea. Thank you so much, Sherry and David from the studio. I'm here with Redima Vidj, a clinical research scientist at the foundation. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do at the research foundation? So my role uh, basically is, it's uh, you can say clinical research scientist um, and our medical writer. So uh, what I do is uh, write uh, manuscripts for the publications. Uh, those are peer reviewed publications. And um, if I'm not wrong, we did like five huge publications uh, this past year. Five, that must be a world record. Uh, <laughs> not really, but yeah, um, it could be painstaking at times, um, so it can be challenging at times. How long did it take you to, how long does it typically take you to get one of those publications through? There could be single patient individualized case reports or to the full-fledged uh, randomized controlled trials. So it really depends on what journal we are targeting, keeping our audience in mind, um, and, and how long the peer review process takes. I see. Yes, which can be really uh, daunting at times, uh, but at the same time, it's really a rewarding experience um, with every single step towards uh, scientific advancement. So it varies. Like for one of our example was post-COVID uh, one trial. Uh, it was a small expanded access program, and it took like more than more than an year. Uh, to so tell me a little bit about the Parkinson's one. That seems like it is the most. Um most notable one that, that, that has come out recently that ever, that's got everyone excited? Yeah, so, so far uh, we did um, the single patient one. Um, uh, it was a 77-year-old uh, woman who was dealing with Parkinson's for like more than 17 years. Wow. So, yeah, so we did uh, the research on that and then um, we had that um, uh, written down as a manuscript, just focusing on that single patient and then uh, that was, yeah, published. So are you currently working on any 
publications that have not been uh, finalized yet? Uh, yeah, so in draft, we do have um, quite a few. They are actually like two. We have like three different Parkinson studies going on. Um, one is a small expanded access program, which we just finished. And I'm uh, actually working on the regulatory writing on that. And uh, soon we'll be working on the manuscript compiling one for that. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And then we have another uh, bigger PDO4 study uh, going on currently. We are, we are like halfway um, uh, towards the analysis right now. So later, I think in this year, in, the, in this year. We'll so PDO4 is, uh, is like a, an upgrade to PDO3? Uh, it's, a, it's a huge uh, randomized controlled study uh, with a placebo arm in it. And it has like a bigger uh, sample in it. So we are pretty exciting about it. I believe we're still um, open enrollment for this, correct? Yes, we are still enrolling. We are nearing enrolling for that, but we are opening. Up. We look forward to what is in store for this this year and very excited for the work that you're doing. Now back to the studio and our wonderful anchor team with lead anchor David Gonzalez and assistant to the lead anchor Sherry Deers. Back to you guys. Great. Thank you, Nadir. Now that that's been confirmed, Sherry... <laughs> Thank you for joining <laughs> us. This is David Gonzalez, favorite nurse and lead anchor for Hopeful News, along with Sherry Deers, lesser anchor. <laughs> and this is Sherry Deers signing off. Yeah, thank you for joining us. We're happy to bring Hopeful News, Stay Hopeful Houston, and we want to say stay hopeful to the entire world because right. we're treating people from all over the world.